Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with CostelloWellness.com, and today we're going to talk about caffeine as a performance enhancing drug for sports. Indeed, caffeine is a drug. It's the most widely consumed drug worldwide, and 90% of adults in America consume caffeine on a regular basis. So first off, caffeine in sports. Uh, CNS stimulation, it makes you more alert. Your reaction time is greater. That's pretty well established. Multiple studies have looked at caffeine and alertness as well as caffeine and acuity and caffeine and reaction time being quicker. All of these are made better with caffeine. So that really depends on your sport. If you're a marathon runner, you probably don't need to be very alert or mentally aware to run a marathon. If you're a ball player or some other sport that requires a quick reaction time or paying attention in the field and being able to execute a play quickly, uh, having enhanced CNS stimulation or being more alert is absolutely going to be performance enhancing. Second, uh, probably has an analgesic or endorphin effect, so it makes your body more euphoric, um, has an anti-pain benefit as well, so when you're out on the field, you're less achy and can perform better because you have less aches and pains. So as an analgesic, not often thought about for caffeine, but it's actually an ingredient in aspirin. They put caffeine in aspirin because it raises your mood and makes you feel better, but also has an analgesic quality to it. Stamina, that's the big question. Does caffeine actually make you have a better or longer workout? And there's two different aspects to this. One of them is can you get up and go and do your exercise better? Being more alert is going to help that. They took uh, elite trained cyclist and they put them on an exercise bike for two hours and said you go full at it for two hours and half the group did not get caffeine half of the group got 250 milligrams of caffeine before exercise and they got another 250 milligrams divided every 15 minutes over that two hour time period they were able to exercise seven to ten percent longer and faster with caffeine in their system so for a performance athlete so a soccer player running up and down the field for an hour or a cyclist or a swimmer caffeine is going to enhance your performance you probably want to take it some before the sport but then actually take small aliquots of it during your sport as well to maintain that activity the other benefit of that is that it increases sodium, potassium, and calcium transport through the muscles. So these are electrolytes that move in and out of your nerves and muscle tissues and cause firing of the nerves and the muscle tissues. And they looked at muscles with and without caffeine in the body. And if you had caffeine in your body, your muscle contraction was greater, faster, and stronger with caffeine than without caffeine. So the actual firing of the muscle is better with caffeine in your system. Uh, the last one is something called lipolysis. So uh, I've always told people that you burn more fat when you have caffeine in your system. And for someone that's trying to fat burn, having caffeine before your exercise not only increases the amount of time that you can exercise, but it actually increases the amount of fat that you burn during exercise. Now this is taken two to three hours before exercise, what happens is, is that the, in the early stages of exercise, 15 to 20 minutes, instead of burning glycogen for energy, you actually burn up to 50% more fat for energy, which allows your glycogen to be used later. So if you have a certain amount of glycogen in your muscles, and after which you become empty and you hit the wall, if you burn fat the first 20 minutes of your exercise, your glycogen is reserved and you can exercise longer. And that probably explains how those uh, endurance cyclists are able to exercise longer with caffeine in their system. Remember, this is supposed to be taken two to three hours before the event to have the maximum fat burning. If you're taking caffeine to exercise and burn fat for weight loss, same concept. You'd rather be burning fat while you're exercising than burning glycogen or glucose in your muscles during exercise. Uh, lastly, I went ahead and looked at one of my pre-workout uh, formulas that I had bought at one point called ACG3. And most of the pre-workout um, things that you'll drink as a supplement are primarily caffeine as a stimulant for all of these reasons. They've got creatine in them and electrolytes and other things, but the primary benefit and the primary goal for these uh, pre-workout supplements is caffeine. Now what's interesting about the supplement ACG3 I looked at to try and tell you how much caffeine is actually in that, it, it doesn't tell me. It says G-Force Energy Blend, which is their fancy term for caffeine, but it actually says 320 milligrams, 
but it's not just caffeine. It's a combination of caffeine, something called 1,3-dimethylphenthalamine, otherwise known as methylhexenamine, otherwise known as 1-3. This is a stimulant medication similar to Sudafed and actually was a decongestant from the 1940s that's been banned by pretty much every athletic group out there because it actually causes uh, death in some people. It causes vasoconstriction of the blood vessels and it elevates blood pressure. I was not aware that that was a component of my pre-workout drink. Um, also contains guarana, which is caffeine, and it contains green tea, which is a source of caffeine as well. So this G-Force Energy Blend, this mysterious 320 milligrams, is some combination of caffeine in three different types, and this other 1-3 um, or methylhexetamine, uh, which is a, again, probably not a great substance to have. You're probably better off with a Red Bull or just a cup of coffee before you exercise so you actually know how much caffeine you're getting. As far as it being a PED, performance enhancing drug, uh, the International Olympic Committee has banned caffeine. It's on its banned substances list. So you can drink caf coffee, but you can't have excess caffeine. So they measure the athlete's urine and use a 12 milligram per deciliter um, concentration of caffeine in the urine as being excessive. And that equates to about eight cups of coffee a day. So if you're taking more than eight cups of coffee a day, it's presumed that you're using caffeine as an enhancing uh, compound as opposed to recreational. So I know high school athletics supposedly will randomly test for caffeine. You could have a cup of coffee, you probably can have a Red Bull, but if you're doing energy drinks and other pre-workout things, you may be in excess and you actually may be banned for your sport from the year. So be careful with how much caffeine you take. Um, a general recommendation is probably in the no more than 200 milligram range for how much you should take for sports, um, probably no more than 400 milligrams in a day. Uh, some of the information I read that talks about it for sports is that you should actually avoid caffeine for the three or four days before your event so you have a, you wear the tolerance of the caffeine wears off and you have more effect. Also a concern is that caffeine is a diuretic, um, which makes you go to the bathroom more and makes you dehydrated. And if you're gonna be an athlete running and sweating, you don't wanna get dehydrated. So that's always been a concern. Um, evidence shows that in a un um, informed or a person who does not drink a lot of coffee that caffeine has a diuretic effect. If you take caffeine on a regular basis, that's even a cup of coffee a day, it loses that diuretic effect. So the fact that caffeine or coffee is a diuretic is probably overrated unless you never drink coffee. I'm going to do a separate video later that's just going to talk about the caffeine content in different drinks. Uh, but for right now, most things you can read your labels. A lot of the energy drinks you actually have to go online and look because they don't put them specifically on the label. But you want to stay in under the 200 milligram range for a sport and you probably want to spread that out during your sport, not drink it all in advance. And you probably want to stay under 400 milligrams for a 24 hour time period. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.